Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bish's RV here, and about a year ago, the electric bike company who makes these handy little folding e-bikes over here reached out and said, hey Josh, you know, a lot of people watch your videos for RV content, obviously, but a lot of RVers are also e-bike kind of people. Would you be willing to go through one of our things over here and tell us what you think about it? Now, I was a total e-bike enthusiast, and I'm, frankly, I've only got about a year under my belt, but I've learned a lot in the meantime, including a little bit of road rash. I've learned some hard experience along the way. She's got a couple battle scars, but she's still trying trucking right along and I've used it quite a bit. I really have absolutely no complaints and I'm very, very happy that I have this thing. But in the meantime, Electric has been, you know, listening to owner feedback, toying with the recipe a little bit and kind of like Iron Man coming out with newer and better suits. They've got the new 3.0 series over here. Now I've got uh, Black Betty and White Lightning, we'll call them. <laughs> <laughs> the 2.0 in the white step through and uh, the 3.0 in the um, straight frame XP series. We're going to kind of go through and show you some of the updates, uh, what they did from the 2.0 updating to the 3.0 here, the enhancements they have. Do I feel it's, you know, worth updating to things like that? A lot of this is just personal and subjective, but uh, well, let, let's see what she has to offer and you folks maybe be the judge. So just in case you're curious, the uh, the different color palettes here, um, you can get these in both the step through varieties like you see on the right, which is very handy if you don't have the longer legs like mine, uh, or you can get the more straight frame XP series like you see over on the left. I did opt to go with the XP series this time. Uh, I, I've found that I'm a person who, like when I'm done pedaling, I keep my right foot down for whatever reason. That's like my ready position, my cruising position. And if I would lean to the right to kind of coast around a curve on that step through frame, it did sit just a little bit lower where sometimes I would scuff the foot pedal on the ground. Not enough that I ever took a digger. Like I said, I, I did have a couple little accidents, but that was mostly just, you know, when you have a, a fun little fast motor and you're a dumb boy, you do dumb things. I'm just saying, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Mine came with scars, neither here nor there. But you can get white or black step through. You can also get white or black straight frame. Now they do also offer the XP light series. and But basically all I, I could tell you about that is it's the same bike, but it lacks some features, but it's less money and it's a little less weight. I mean, it's what I would tell you is that I probably don't like it as much as this, but obviously there's a little bit of a, a monetary difference between them. But what are the physical differences? Uh, like if you had a 2.0, would it be worth stepping up to the 3.0? What are you getting? First of all, the motor's been upgraded. Now it's still a 500 watt motor, but it's putting out nearly double the torque. And basically what that means is it's going to have about the same um, speed performance, but it'll get you up to that speed a whole lot faster. I was actually really surprised the first time I twisted the throttle on the 2.0 and in, in my house, <laughs> <laughs> just about popped a wheelie and almost went through uh, a closet door and my wife comes around the corner and goes, what was that? I'm like, nothing. But this thing right here, no joke, check this out. So like I said, the uh, the new motor putting out more torque on this thing, it's no joke. Watch this, just a quick twist of the throttle and it just, <laughs> it just takes right off, man. Now, what you're gonna find here in general, the, the, the overall theme of this is, uh, okay, we have a great bike, we can't really make it go faster due to the way that e-bikes are regulated. Like, you're not supposed to be able to just make one of these go 60 miles an hour, basically. Uh, and I won't get too much into that, but always check local, like, counties and statutes and whatnot to see, you know, the maximum speed of an e-bike in your area. So Johnny Law ain't paying a shine to you. But long story short, they changed up the, I don't know, tooth gearing, basically, from 14 to 28 teeth on the 2.0 to 11 to 28 teeth here on the 3.0. And what that's going to do is just basically give you more ability to kind of zero in your, uh, your, your pedaling to maintain the speed that you want. And where I noticed that doing some test riding is it felt far, far easier to match the speed of the pedal assist system uh, when you are pedaling along with a little bit of, uh, you know, get your motor run and help along the way. Next, they moved up to the old butt saddle right here, and um, this is what the 2.0 came with standard, and if you couldn't tell by the cobwebs and the dust on it, I didn't, uh, I didn't use that thing a whole awful lot. Uh, one of the very first things I did is I jumped on electric site, and uh, I, I got one of the old big butt seats on there. Even though I've got a skinny little bony butt, I still did not regret it. If you notice this year, though, the standard is just a better seat. They're not they're they're not making you pay extra just to, to feel comfortable sitting on it. 
But an upgrade I noticed immediately, I mean the moment I sat on it and I put my hands on it, were the enhancements they made to the grips here. Uh, there was actually a, a couple viewers who commented on my first 2.0 tour that I did there, saying how, yeah, those, uh, you know, those handles are nice and big and they, you know, they feel kind of great to just rest your hands on, but when you're actually riding, they kind of tear up your hands. And the longer I rode it, the more I actually came to agree with them. And what I noticed immediately this year is they've completely redesigned their grip. And not only is it just less bitey on your hands, but it's just generally softer. And it it just, especially if your hands are wet, it, it feels a lot less likely like your hands are going to slip off this thing, which is important, you know, when you're going at the kind of speeds these can put out. But once again, a major, major update they applied to these uh, came in just comfort in ride and handling. And one of the uh, significant things they enhanced here is the uh, the front forks now have 20% more travel than they did before at 50 millimeters instead of 40. What that means is that this thing can soak up a lot more shock and jolt before that gets translated up the frame, up the handlebars, into your hands and down your spine, rattling your teeth. Now, a potentially game-changing difference they made from the 2.0 up here to the 3.0 is they have integrated uh, the, the, the rear cargo rack on the back of this. So on the 2.0 version, the rear cargo rack on this was bolted on, and it had about a 75-pound weight rating. On the 3.0, you might notice they fully welded it on, integrated it right in place, and as a result, is capable of holding far more weight. I think it's now 150-pound rated, and the bike now has a passenger mode um, what that will do is it'll limit the bike to 10 miles an hour uh, so that you don't have too much weight going too fast that can get out of control too quickly and now hurt two people instead of one. I guess the idea being, you want to hurt yourself? <laughs> be our guest, be our guest, put our service to the test. But if you want to go hurting someone else, well, you're only going to be able to do it half as well. Something you can't really see, uh, obviously, though, and I don't know that you overtly really experience it but the uh, the electric controller on this basically is now a 20 amp instead of an 18 and that doesn't sound like much but if you actually look at the amount of energy that can put out what it means is that the new 3.0 has more electrons available for all of the different you know areas of the bike like the headlight i've noticed this is one of the things that uh i also noticed here as long as i'm shifting and we're talking about that this has a vastly improved headlight. It puts out far, far more light and gives me far better visibility. Obviously, the last time I took a digger, I uh, did not adjust that, so I'm glad I spotted it now. But, um, it, you know, far more light coming out of that thing. But surprisingly, there there is one, like, it just feels like glaring miss and oversight. We're going to talk about a couple things I don't like about these uh, later in the video as well. And something else I thought is actually a pretty significant feature right here. Uh, very, very handy if, like, have you ever been riding a bike and a person in a vehicle didn't see it, didn't pay attention, you had to grab your brakes real fast? Sometimes stop it a little bit faster matters. On the 2.0, they had 160 uh, millimeter brake rotors. If you notice over here in the 3.0, I don't know how obvious this will be on camera, but these are 180 millimeters. Well, long story short, what that means is that when you grab the brakes, this thing stops faster. And I thought it was crazy until I started reading the updates because I thought, well, maybe my bikes just wore in a little bit and uh, I, I wasn't aware of the updates. It's no joke. These things stop in a hurry. So what else all that? Oh, <clears throat> idiot. It's a tree branch. Whatever. What does all that mean? <laughs> Obviously, I don't edit my videos a lot. Basically, the 3.0 series is essentially categorically superior to the 2.0 because they didn't take anything away. They took everything that made the 2.0 great, and they just made it much more gooder. And that comment dedicated to my high school English teacher, teacher that said I would, you know, never amount to much. Actually, she didn't. Mrs. Forrester, if you're watching this, you are absolutely awesome, and you gave me a good grasp of our native language, much more gooder than I otherwise extra would have had. Uh, neither here nor there. Let's saddle up, let's take it for a ride. But first, you folks last year, by the way, you called me out on something and I thank you for it. You said, Josh, you dummy, where's your helmet? And you're right, I'm gonna slap one on this year. That was stupid of me. These things can go fast enough, you can crack your skull, you can land in the hospital in a hurry. At least slap a helmet on your nugget. Uh, where's my helmet? Hey honey, where's my helmet? No. 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 We're going to have to get creative. That's right. Let's do this.
this this is not a joke i can't find my helmet but i don't want to get yelled at but the problem is this thing obviously isn't made for me mine has blue instead of pink uh but still has the lights of course you know very very critical <laughs> lit up awesome um don't yell at me an attempt was made i'm doing the best i can yeah <laughs> you should see my neighbors looking at me they're hardly even phased at this point though now, I don't know what you're necessarily going to glean from this portion of our video, uh, other than the fact that I'm really, like, I'm, you can tell I'm an awkward individual, right? Um, you know, grace just is not my style. And uh, with only having one hand on the bike and having one hand on the camera, you're probably going to see this thing weeble wobble all over the place, and hopefully I don't fall down. Mm -hmm. But what I kind of wanted to be able to relay is, again, the, the enhancements to things like the suspension. Now, something I didn't necessarily share before is the fact that the, the front fork suspension, um, it does have some adjustment to it. You can stiffen it up, you can soften it up. So depending on how you want the bike to ride or potentially the type of terrain that you are uh, experiencing, you, you know, you can sort of adjust to that a little bit. Like if you're going over a bunch of little rattle-tat chatter kind of, you know, stuff, like these little bumps in the sidewalk here, you can really soak a lot of that up. And I will say, they're like reading through the spec sheet, like, yeah, okay, all right, maybe this, so it should handle it. Like it feels notably better here. Now, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a tour of things while we're going, this has a, uh, I, oh shoot, I believe that's called a Schwamano shifter down there, and you can see the handlebar weaving all over the place, because again, I'm not skilled at doing this. Um, that is a very generic bike shifter. One of the things that I found on my 2.0, uh, shortly after I got it, I didn't have it properly secured when it was folded up before I loaded it in my car. The bike fell over, and I broke my shifter. The local bike shop fixed that, like, in, in like 10 minutes so that was just no big deal which is actually really really nice now our main control panel down here um it has multiple kind of brightness displays you can crank that up you can change it you know to miles per hour kilometers per hour shows you how much juice is left uh obviously you know how many miles you've gone all that kind of critical information uh the little buttons over here by my thumb there's three buttons there one is the general on off power button and then you have an, uh, a plus minus generally speaking the plus minus is just going to uh increase or decrease your pedal assist which if you see the pa on that screen right there you might notice it bump holy jeez oh my lord that enhanced acceleration on this oh my gosh when i hit that button it took right up i am glad i was leaning forward enough once again now here's here's another interesting thing on the uh the acceleration factors of this you can um ease those down so that it'll reach the same speed but it won't do so quite as aggressively which is awful nice i might back this one down but where that could be really really nice is when you're going up and down inclines holy crap batman the extra power that thing can give you to go up and down inclines. Um, maybe, like, if you're walking beside it and you want to twist the throttle to load this heavy bike up into, like, a toy hauler ramp gate or something like that, that could be a really, really beneficial thing for you. Now, you might noticing how I'm kind of cutting through some grass over here. Um, that is one of the things that I really like about these bikes. When you start going through, we'll say, adverse terrain like this, if you're on a traditional pedal bike, it's, you know, a bit of work. And I don't want to run over these people and their beautiful dogs, so I'm going to cut over this away right here. Let's go through the local ball fields. Now, you may have noticed, um, you know, looking down on my display, I spend most of my time at Pedal Assist 1. That'll cruise you at about six, seven miles an hour. That's fast enough for a casual little around the park kind of cruise for me, you know? And that's really what I've found the most use uh, out of this bike for. It's just a, a light duty recreational thing. Frankly, this is way more bike than I really need for my adventures. Um, <laughs> adventures, yeah. Anyway, um, the, uh, the, the thing though is what's nice about it is I'm still doing a little bit of work, but the bike's just kind of helping me along. That's, that's where I like to find my sweet spot. Now, if uh, my kid decides she wants to race old dad, I just bump my thumb a couple times and jack this thing up to like 14 miles an hour real fast and, you know, leave her in the dust. She can't keep up. And uh, <laughs> it drives her absolutely nuts. She tells me no cheater mode on my bike. And it's those, looking for traffic, fun little uh, memories like that, that uh, that's why I like these so much. It 
just that little family connection and those fun little moments are things I really enjoy. Ah, you did good, unicorn sparkle pony. And that is a lot of fun. I can already tell I'm going to enjoy cruising around the local area on this thing. But like I said, there are a couple of things about this that I don't really love and they're they're really the same kind of hangups that I had on the 2.0, although obviously it didn't stop me from having a good time there. The first uh, kind of hang up I have with this thing is it's it's hefty. These things are just north of 60 pounds. So picking them up and, and moving them around, like even if you're at like a standstill and you want to kind of pick the bike up to point a different direction, it's it's a bit of work. The other thing that really surprises me, especially considering the uh, improved enhanced uh, electrical controller that they have on these, is that it doesn't have any sort of like USB plugs here, even in like a little covered port, because, you know, one of the things I respect is that they're, they're not overselling what this is and is not capable of. They're not advertising this necessarily as like waterproof, certainly water resistant. I've driven it in some light rain, had no problems other than the fact that, you know, when they tell you in driver's training that uh, the, the roads are slickest when it first starts raining, well, those little park trails I was on under all those trees, yeah, it created some slime and the bike went zing right out from under me but to be fair I was trying to beat a worse rain home and I had that thing cranked at full tilt and leaned a little too hard into a corner like I was an f1 driver and well you know I, I earned it basically I earned my scars um, but it just kind of surprises me that they don't have something like that like this thing has a very solid lithium battery bank uh, in that frame chassis space right there I'm just uh, a little shocked it doesn't have any sort of USB capacity. The other thing that I don't really care for on these, and maybe there's a reason for it, I just don't understand. This is where you act like turn the battery on off or unlock it to slide it out of the chassis once it's folded open. I don't really care for that. I, it's it's underneath of it. It's hard to get to. Now, usually, once I have the key in, I tend to just leave it there. Um, that you know, I, I don't really find a reason to take it in or out unless I have the bike just parked at the city park for a little while. But I, I just kind of, I don't know. I would sort of like that relocated somewhere else. Now, in terms of things I like, there's plenty. And, and frankly, I'm not going to sit here and bore you all with every single thing that I like about this in my list. But one of the things that I do enjoy about this is the fold down feature. Now I've still got the handlebars extended to uh, fit this into the back of my old, well, I don't want to brag on you, but I do drive a 2012 Kia Soul <clears throat> Korean Mini Cooper, but I can, I can fit this thing into the hatchback of my little mini roller skate hamster car that I have over there. Um, being able to kind of move this around to take it different places like that, that's cool. I uh, utilized that feature when I took my 2.0 to the bike shop to re replace that shifter, um, found, you know, did it there. By the way, at the end of this video, um, I'm going to uh, steal and <laughs> reuse some of the footage that I used on my 2.0 the first time around uh, to kind of show you loading the bike in and out of a couple different places, because that's one of the things. I'm an RV nerd. I'm not an e-bike expert or anything like that. And uh, I found that you can fit these things into all kinds of different cargo spaces in RVs. Like one of those little 16 foot bunkhouse models, that little side bunk flip up cargo door, you can shove two of those things in there. Uh, so you could actually maybe use like a small bunkhouse as a couples model, but that's an entirely different topic for an entirely different day. While I have this folded down, I'll tell you one of the first things I noticed on this one, the um, th this little kind of like leveling pad right here or, or, or just stabilizer pad when this thing is folded and it's just sitting there I kind of found the 2.0 a little bit tipsy like I told you earlier in the video I bumped it one time knocked it over and it naturally it fell on the handlebars and it fell right on that shifter and just smashed that thing amazingly it actually still worked but I couldn't tell what gear I was in and it always made like a kind of sound or something like that almost sounded a little bit like uh one of those old dial-up modems trying to make connection <laughs> now something i mentioned earlier is this thing is heavy and depending on where you're moving it like maybe you're just walking it into place it can be a bit of work but one of the cool things is this has a walking mode so as you can see i'm not going to do look ma no hands just the one hand but if you push and hold the minus button on here, it will engage walking mode. Holy crap, that is like takeoff and gallop mode. 
So yeah, remember how I said that you can do things like tune down the, the severity of the uh, the acceleration. I just got this bike. I haven't gone through the menu and quite fine tuned everything the way that I had it on my last one, the way that just kind of fit me. But that's another thing. Uh, the, the PDF manual is online. I'll leave you a link in the video description if I remember. And if I forget, to, hey, nerd, you dummy, you forgot. And I won't even be offended by that. But um, you can go through, you can cap the top speed, miles per hour to kilometers. Uh, you can turn the pedal assist, the throttle on, off. Like you can control quite a few things on this bike right through the uh, the settings area there. You can even turn the walk mode off so you don't accidentally cause this thing to go flying, well, kind of through your your, uh, your 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 coat closet in the entry of the house like I almost did last year. But a question I, I've had a lot of people uh, ask me after watching that first e-bike video that I did, why an e-bike? Doesn't it kind of defeat the purpose? Isn't, aren't you biking for exercise? That's the thing. Whether this is the right kind of thing for you or not really depends on what your goals are so like yeah if you're looking for exercise unless you want to turn uh, all the electrical assist stuff off and you want to be able to like basically put a 60 pound weight under you yeah no e-bikes are not the right decision for you certainly but that's not what i'm looking for as i'm sure you've discerned by looking at my body type anyway i look like uh, a, a blue version of grimace back when mcdonald's actually had that big creepy purple monster anyway um heard he ran off with the hamburger whole thing anyway <laughs> <laughs> I miss Grimace. He was my favorite. But uh, for me, it's about just casual recreation. Last year, uh, I actually got a little bit emotional talking about how, you know, I, I got to go out on, and, and enjoy a ride with my dad, you know, and uh, have a good time. And again, where I really enjoy it is just for the easy cruise comfort of just running around the local park or bumping the pedal assist up to like, oh God, a guy buzzed around the corner real quick and I'm gonna be in his way and, you know, accelerating quickly out of there, especially on this thing. Um, but also like if you're going up inclines, hills, things like that, cutting through grass so you don't run over those folks' dogs, that's where these come in. If you're looking to bike for recreation, that's where they're awesome. And actually something I'm gonna do my, uh, now those who've watched my channel for a long time, uh, when I say my dad, it might be confusing. I'm very fortunate that I have three dads. Uh, you might remember uh, from the Halet days, Mr. Halet, I'd refer to him as my father. He's actually my stepfather. He married my mother, which is why we had different na last names, in case you were ever curious about my family tree. But my father, unfortunately, smoked like a diesel train for a number of years, and he's not, uh, like, he doesn't have limited mobility. He can walk and stuff fine, but he just doesn't have lung capacity. He's probably got some wicked emphysema at this point. And something like this allows me and him to cruise around the neighborhood and have those awesome father-son moments as adults that we had when I was a kid. And that means so much to me. His birthday's right around the corner. I'm definitely, definitely, I sound like Rain Man, getting him one of these so that hopefully me and him can continue to enjoy some bike rides around the neighborhood. Now there were two main um, questions I really wanted to help try to answer with the information in this video. One was why e-bike, and we've already kind of dove into that. But the second main one was, if you already have the 2.0, is the 3.0 worth upgrading to? Um, it's really hard for, I think, somebody just watching this video to really feel and discern and understand how much better the ride is on this. Like. I, I, I'm shocked at how much better, how much smoother the ride is on this bike right here compared to the 2.0 version. But um, is it worth, you know, uh, another chunk of money updating, upgrading? I don't know. I don't know. That is tough. I don't know if it's, say, a thousand dollars better than what I already had. Better? Sure. A thousand dollars better? That starts to put it into perspective for me. But that's not a question necessarily for me to answer. That's really more of a question for you to be able to answer. What, what might help be the deal breaker there is keep an eye on Electric's website. I'll actually leave you a link in the video description. If you wanna keep an eye on their website, like maybe they're having some kind of sales go on, it might help make uh, that, that upgrade a little better than maybe you, you have a second e-bike in the house for somebody else who didn't have one or you hand it down to somebody else, something like that, you know? Um, the uh, the other thing here that really might be a massive factor on this one is, in a sense, it might be the cheapest set of e-bikes you ever get. And you're going, what? 
because remember, depending on your size, stature, weight categories, GVW and all that kind of stuff, um, the electric 3.0 does have that new passenger mode. So you might be able to get one bike that can take care of two people. Maybe one of you runs up to the camp store at one point, maybe the two of you get together and take a cruise around the campsite. Maybe you could do something like, uh, you know, be able to, to cruise one of your grandkids around or something like that and have a good time. I don't know. But the fact that it is now, uh, you know, structurally built to be able to have a second person on it, I think could be a game changer because instead of needing two, you might be able to get by with just one. Now, like I said, I will include some footage just after this of me uh, folding the bike up and loading it into a bunch of different camper spaces just because, again, I'm an RV nerd. It feels very appropriate to see how this can kind of integrate into RV culture. But uh, in the meantime, you may notice how the sun has changed uh, behind me here. Um, this video took me about three hours to put together, and that's just capturing the footage and all that stuff, just me talking and going through the park. Uh, these videos take a lot of time and effort, so if you appreciate the information that we're bringing you here today, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new with us, and leave us a little note that just says, hey, that was fun, or you know, leave me a question if there's something else I haven't answered or anything like that. Let me know, and I'll do my best to fill in the blanks. And if you appreciate that effort, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you the next time around, maybe when they make the 4.0 or whatever that happens to be. So stay tuned for the bonus footage, and as always, take care, stay safe, wear those helmets, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Camping. Trails? Happy trails, everyone. Yeah, whatever. Well, everything kind of gets in on the action a little bit. And some things, like all of this, like, you know, folding those steps, even with one hand, eventually you get used to it. But it, it's when it's all new at first, it's all kind of a foreign motion. You get kind of used to it. Now, this is the main bike folding lock. I'm unable to do that one-handed. Apologies. But that right there, uh, that's what kind of latches the whole thing together. And that does the lion's share of the work, but we still got some stuff that kind of sticks up out of the way here, specifically like the handlebars. Uh, there is yet another folding lock right here for that, which I thought was one of the most brilliant aspects of this design. That way, you don't constantly have to take, uh, you know, the handlebars on and off and readjust their height or anything like that. Um, although, that being said, to get this into my little car over there, I am probably going to have to take the seat off, but it's not that big a deal because, as you can see, another handy little clamp down there. But I found out I didn't even have to take the seat off to get it squished back here. Now, if you're looking, I still have the back seat flipped up. I have just a small hatch space back here, and this bike is occupying every available square inch. But nothing is smashed, nothing is getting crushed, everything fits, and the door still closes. So, I mean, there's no question about it. You can definitely just walk this thing right up the ramp and load it in there. And that is actually one of the times where I think the uh, the walking assist feature on this is really nice. When you're going up those kind of hefty inclines, uh, the motor can engage a little bit to kind of help, again, carry the weight of the bike itself. So you're kind of just rolling it. It's sort of a, you know, a, a, a mutual action, as it were, instead of you doing all the work. But I got to thinking, what about people who don't have toy haulers, like me? Frankly, most people with RVs don't have toy haulers. What if you have something a little more traditional? Are there places where you could still put one of these? And I don't know, let's find out. Well, it turns out not only does it fit in here, it fits in here with room to spare. I was really kind of worried about the width, but the way this all folds down, look at this. Uh, you actually, there's enough room. You for sure want to make sure you do something to, to strap it down so it's not jiggle banging all over the place. And frankly, I'm not convinced you couldn't fit two of them in there. All right, so we're three for three. But what about the really, really little trailers that don't have near as wide of a rear cargo door. Well, 